I'm Megan. I'm Sierra. And I'm Maggie. And, and we're, we're from, from TC2. TC2. For today's video, we are going to be telling you guys how to improve five of the most common back handspring mistakes. So we always usually do tutorials, and today we thought it'd be a good idea to focus on, okay, you have the skill, but you might need to improve like these five different things that we're going to talk about, and so we're going to be taking you through each of them and talking about here's what you can do to fix it so you get a nice, beautiful, pretty back handspring when we yeah. are done. Also, just a reminder, if you've seen our videos a couple times but you aren't subscribed and you feel like you keep coming back, feel free to subscribe right now. We post every Tuesday, and instead of having to like search around for videos, it'll just pop up right on your home feed. It'll be so easy. And we'd love if you subscribe. Yeah, join the TC2 crew. So, let's get started. So, the very first common mistake they're going to talk about is very short back handspring because it is a very important to lengthen your back handspring. Not only because like when you do the skill, like you should lengthen it, but because back handsprings are very foundational skills that you use for corner tumbling, and it's what you use to build up to like your big flipping skills, so like tucks, layouts, folds. And if you have a short back handspring, you're not going to get any power out of that. So we're going to show you how to fix that. So our tip for fixing a short back handspring are using markers to have goals as to where you should put your hands and your feet. Because first you want to extend where your hands go, and then like that will lengthen your feet, but you also want to lengthen that separately. So. Here's what you should do. So I'm gonna do my short back handspring and Maggie's going to watch and keep in mind where I put my hands and feet and then she'll tell me, okay, try reaching your hands here and then your feet further Just back. Just a little bit further, even if it's not far enough because making goals you can achieve will help you get it. So short first. Okay. Okay, so she just made it a little bit further than what I already did. And you're, keep in mind, you're not going to jump onto these this is gonna be next to where your hands go. So. And also make sure you have like a starting point, like she's starting on the line right now. Yep. Perfect. And then if you need to keep lengthening it past that, depending on where your starting point is, mm -hmm. you'll just keep moving it further and further until you have a nice lengthened out back handspring. So tip with this is, even though you know your back handspring would need to be a lot longer, make them shorter because you're gonna have to progress to get better. So don't just make one large goal because you won't be as motivated to get there. So make short goals and then get there. Notice Sierra is laying down her back handspring was the length of these two, or this one lane. And so a good goal for your back handspring is to try and get it to be a full body length and then that or should be good. Or if it's a little bit longer, like, I just think any longer than this is probably fine, but like try and- Like you don't have to shorter. stretch it past that though. Yeah. All right, so the next common mistake that I struggle with is feet apart in your back handspring. All right, first things first, make sure that when you're doing a back handspring, you're starting with your feet together because if they're already starting apart, odds are they're not going to just go back together. The next two things we're going to talk about are using different things like scrunchies, stuffed animals. I'm sure you could get creative with a few other things, but we're going to be using these to Put either like around our ankles or holding a stuffed teddy bear or other animal between your knees and you're going to be trying to keep those stuck between your legs so that it doesn't come apart and that means that your legs are staying together. Alright, so to show you what happens when your legs come apart, I'm going to put the teddy bear in between my feet and then when I do it, obviously the teddy bear is flying, my feet were not holding it together. So. Oh no, teddy bear came out, my legs were apart. So oh no, it's dead fix it, we're going to put it back where it was and squeeze your legs together, save the teddy bear. And the good thing about this is that you're not putting something big enough that's like keeping your legs apart still, like my feet and legs are still totally together, so that's why you want this with like a stuffed animal, because it's still like squishy enough to keep together and also like you won't get hurt if it like hits you. So, now we're gonna do it, hopefully my legs stay together. They did, it just came out at the end. All right, the scrunchie one is probably going to be something that I think is like a little less scary. Maggie, you know, disagrees, but I think it's less scary. This one, you just put around your ankles. And the good thing with this is that it still is going to give you some flexibility, but if your legs are coming apart just, apart just a little bit, it's not going to like, I don't know, Maggie was having issues with the teddy bear, so I feel like that should make it easier, you know? But again, the scrunchie is going to provide resistance where it's going to be like, try to keep your feet together. The more it's stretched, you can feel that, so. Just trying to keep track of that stuff and trying to, like it's pulling your feet naturally together, so 
letting it do that and be like, yeah, I want my feet to stay together. So again, back handspring. Now I need to work on my push-ups so my arms don't bend like these <laughs> did. The third most common back handspring mistake is bending your arms in the middle of your back handspring. I know I struggle with this and it's definitely something you have to think a lot about in order to make sure your arms are staying locked out during your back handspring. But if you're bending your arms, you're going to be losing power. It's going to be harder to connect skills to. So the more locked out your arms are, the better off you're going to be. And we're going to tell you guys how to work on fixing that. So we actually think one of the best ways to fix if your arms are bending is to fix the length of your back handspring because I feel like usually when you bend your arms you have a shorter back handspring and you're kind of just like really putting a ton of weight on your arms at one time whereas if you lengthen your back handspring I just feel like the weight's easy, easier to manage and you're not just like oh my god like there's my whole body weight. So lengthening your back handspring should make it easier to bear the weight and keep your arms a little bit straighter but another thing you can do is some hand hops because that's literally just you practicing like putting your weight on your hands and like keeping them straight. So. We're gonna do that. The other good thing about practicing your hand hops is that not only will it help you keep your arms straighter, but it'll help you give the power coming off your hands onto your feet that you're gonna need going into another step after that. So, good. All right, so another tip or helpful thing you can do is just like in your head. My coaches always used to do this to me and I do this to the little kids that I coach. Um, if you act like you put like a toothpick right here, then if you bend your arms, the toothpick's gonna poke you and you don't wanna be poked, so keep your arms straight. So the fourth common mistake is double bouncing at the start. And I'm not trying to relate this to stepping into your back handspring because I know it's a really common thing to do in cheer. That is okay if you're like a cheerleader and you step into your back handspring. That is something that they do. What I'm talking about is, I see this when I'm like with gymnasts that I'm coaching. They'll be starting their back handspring and they'll kind of do like some bounces before throwing themselves in their back handspring. Don't do that. It takes away so much power and it's just like so much more movement in the beginning than you need to do. So. That points off. Yeah. We're gonna try to fix it. So in my opinion, this is mostly of a mental approach because what I think that gymnasts who, like, who do this are trying to do is either build up the courage to start a scale because I know sometimes if I'm like nervous, I'm like kind of waiting a little bit, trying to readjust myself. So I get that. So to overcome that, I think we need to just fix the approach from the start. So as a reminder, the proper approach for back handspring is feet together, arms up, bend your legs, swing back, and jump. Okay, there's only one jump. So I think it'd be helpful to try the approach and just go back onto some big squishy mat like this and just get that until you're no longer bouncing like multiple times. So normal approach, one bounce onto your back and that's it. All right, this also helps with making your back handsprings longer because it teaches you to push back and then this is also what I had to do because my back handsprings are short. What aren't my back handsprings? They're everything but good. That's what. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like also you need to remind yourself that when you're doing this you have just as much power as you do when you're doing the multiple bounces because I think some people think it's giving them more power so you have to be thinking like could I see myself doing a back handspring out of this and to start to envision yourself doing that so once you do go to tumble track or floor you're like okay yeah this approach is like totally fine there's nothing wrong with it but again practicing it is just gonna make you more and more comfortable with it. Alright, for the fifth and final mistake it is having no rebound, which I know in cheers sometimes it's like stick and sand, but it is also good to practice like having rebounds when you just do it and making sure that if you're just doing a back handspring to do it, you have a good rebound so when you want to get skills out of it, you have power and not just dead. <laughs> so from experience coaching, whenever we're teaching our gymnasts how to do a back handspring and we're reminding them like, hey, jump out of it, make sure you have a rebound, they don't get it because they're like, what do you mean? I'm literally just jumping after my back handspring. But the more and more you do it, the faster you're practicing your bounce out of your back handspring, you start realizing, oh, like this is coming like from the ground. Like when I'm landing, I'm already like getting that power from the ground. And so if you practice it over and over, you're like, I'm not just jumping after my back handspring. It's like me not just like stopping myself and like digging my feet into the ground. 
I'm just using that and letting it kind of bounce me off the ground. So we're going to start though by doing back handsprings and we're literally just gonna jump. So when Sierra did hers, there was like a pretty decent delay between her back handspring and then the jump. So then the goal is just to keep lessening that delay until you're landing and you're just jumping off the ground right away. It also helps to really pull your arms up because if you're keeping your chest down or arms down here, it's just not going to help you bounce as high. So really like pull your body weight up, you're gonna get a higher and more powerful rebound. Up. And then you can, you know, stick it. We really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you think any of the tips that we gave were helpful or helped you improve your back handspring, please give it a thumbs up. If you know someone, share it, tell them to watch yeah, the video. Say, hey, I know you've been struggling with your back handspring, but you know, if you have one of these five problems, here's a way to fix it. Also, I want to say doing your back handspring on trampoline or tumble track will really help you out with like pretty much all this stuff and just building a better back handspring because it's easier to do on those things, so it's easier to focus on what you need to fix. This week's shout out goes to this person on screen now. Thank you so much for watching our videos and supporting us and liking and commenting. If you want a chance to be next week's shout out, comment down below a skill that you need the most improvement on because if you guys like these kinds of videos, then we could keep doing them in the future where we kind of move beyond just the tutorial on how to get the skill, but like focusing on how to get common things that happen after good. you get the skill. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned with that. Follow us on social media yeah. also. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.